Hello, I'm River, and welcome to my Devil May Cry The Bloody Palace paint series. Today, we'll be working on Devil Trigger Nero. This model, as well as his rules, comes in the Devil Trigger expansion pack, which comes separately from the core box. This model has quite a few mold lines, so you'll have to be careful to make sure you try to get them all. I myself had missed quite a few when it came to the final product, so I'll just point out right now that the edges of the wings and kind of underneath them have quite a bit. Lots of extra plastic. Just be careful. I go ahead and I begin stripping away some of the mold lines that I find all over the body. You find these on the extremities, the blades, the wingtips, as well as directly across the top of his head. I found this one to be very difficult to reach. Along the length of his body as well. I give the entire model a coat of uniform gray. I have a little bit trouble as it was the last bit in my can, but I seem to cover enough with an even enough coating that it didn't seem to make too much of a negative effect. Even if the primer is not fully covering the model in its entirety, that's all right because as long as there's pigment somewhere in there, the paint will be able to stick. I start off with Wizard's Orb Green, and I begin painting all of the fleshy bits on Nero. His exposed chest, his neck and face, biceps, as well as the palms of his hands. Minotaur Hide, we use this brown to sort of cover the more chitinous bits that go around his forearms, his torso, the spikes on his shoulders and back, as well as the bizarre chitinous growths on his legs. Now, this color can sort of be seen as more of a red, so if you want to use a more reddish brown or just a red in general, feel free. His legs actually don't use this color, but I felt like it made him stand out a little more, so I decided to go for it. And with Necromancer Cloak, we will do the legs as well as the rear end of Nero and the base of his feet. Again, if you want to be more on model with this, you would use this Necromancer's Gray with the chitinous bits at his feet. Ghostly Blue, I go ahead and I paint all of the magic Yamato type devil energy coming off of his body as wings as well as sort of coming up through his body, coming out of his chest, out of his forearms, as well as sort of out of his rib area. He has several different spikes on his shoulders that are kind of like talons, which are alternating the chitin versus the energy, the chitin and the energy. But for here, I just kind of do it randomly. I don't worry too much about sticking on model, I just do what is convenient for me. Don't worry about it being too clean, because this can kind of get cleaned up later, as well as you can make it seem as if it's really glowing if it's kind of sp the blue is spreading out. With Lawful White, we give the Son of Sparta his iconic white hair. Watch out for the horns, although it's not the end of the world if you get any on it. Do be careful about the rest of his body. Skeleton bone. I go ahead and just very lightly get the horns. These go around the side of his head and kind of arch down sort of in front of his face. I also am very careful and use this bone color to give sort of like a highlight that Nero's weird chitin body parts have at the end of their tips. I use this along the torso, along all of the pointed jagged blades, using the side of my brush to get all of the little nubs on the back of his hands, as well as the tops of the blades and edges on his shoulders, forearms. And feet. Mm -hmm. 
gunmetal. I go ahead and I paint the Red Queen. It can be a little messy here, it'll be basically one solid color. With Dragonfire Red, I get the little decals on the Red Queen. The three Xseed symbols, as well as the handle. With Shadow Wash, I get basically all of the chitinous bits on Nero's body. I use a 2 to 1 wash to water mixture here. I get around his torso. I get the edge of his blade as well as the housing of the mechanical parts on it. I get his legs, horns, and hair. With some blue tone, I get basically everything I missed. Again, I use a 2 to 1 mix here. I very heavily, generously give the wings the dark blue. This will sink in very well between each of the sort of feathery uh, growths, and will give the effect that the upwards parts are glowing brighter and then it's getting darker in the center. I also get all of his flesh with this color. Coming back with the wizard orb, I just very carefully highlight his muscles, making sure to keep some of the dark, just sort of edge highlight the abs, as well as his biceps. When it comes to his face, I just very carefully edge highlight his nose, his lip area, as, as well as sort of his cheeks to give the vision of his face getting more light than maybe the back of his head. Coming back with Ghostly Blue, I very carefully, and over a very long period of time, highlight each individual bump on the wing. I give them sort of just a tiny little edge highlight so that they seem to stick out much more. I'm a little more generous with it towards the top and I'm very careful towards the more base of the wing cape magical ethereal veil thing he has going. A little later I get a little impatient and just use the side of my brush and get a very large portion of these feathers all at once. You can also go back, re bring back some of the light from the sort of glowy bits that we had put in his chest and forearms. Lawful white, I'm just gonna very carefully bring that white back to his hair. I go a little strong on it, but that's all right. His hair is whiter in this form than in his base form. With mithril silver, I go back and I edge highlight the blade of the Red Queen. Just very carefully get the edge and a tiny bit of the housing as well. Skeleton bone, I just very carefully pick out some of the little like twisty strands in the horns to just kind of highlight to bring to life the horns a little. Matte black. I'm just gonna very generously coat the base of the model so that it looks uniform and is prepared for the game board. I very carefully avoid the sort of direction facing marker, which is for the devil triggers a wave of energy as opposed to just a line. Under Dark Indigo, the same color we had used for Nero's jacket in the original model, I'm going to use to make the base highlight. And with that, I consider my Devil Trigger Nero done. As always, thank you for stopping by and watching this video. I hope your painting's going well too. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.